how powerful is the SCP Foundation, really? This is one of those questions that is very strongly tied to which canon version of the SCP Foundation you really follow. Like, if you're looking at what happened to Site-13's version of the SCP Foundation, they're clearly inferior uh, in power to various other incarnations because they get taken over. So... I thought I would examine, in a short video today, a real question that a lot of people have about the SCP Foundation. How powerful is it, really? Let's get started. So the SCP Foundation in fiction is at its core in fiction. It makes it sound like there's some other version of the SCP Foundation, but <laughs> I try to, I'm trying to be clear here because I know people want to be like, oh, the SCP Foundation is real. It's not. <laughs> but if it were real, that's the... That's the, that's the premise of our arguments we're going to be making if it were real the sp foundation would be a pretty powerful uh organization because we're talking about something that's international in scope first of all um which can compete with uh the goc at least on equal mostly equal footing uh and the goc is being backed by you know the un I'm not going to say that UN organizations are particularly powerful, but some of the extra governmental or some of the intergovernmental organizations, I should say, uh, that the UN runs are pretty powerful at their core. So the SCP Foundation can compete with something that is supported by the entire international community. Um, the SCP Foundation definitely derives much of its authority from the U.S. government. And uh, as sad as that is to say, that's probably because the authors, a lot of the, uh, not all, but a lot of the authors, early authors anyway, were uh, themselves American. So it just kind of made sense that in their mind, that's what was going on. But as it expanded in scope, even though it may get a lot of funding and authority from uh, the federal government of the United States, uh, which is, it, it is reflected in some of the backstory lore for when we talk about like, uh, the Omega-7 and Alpha-9 uh, uh, MTFs that involved, or any of the programs that involved creating super soldiers, uh, those were for the U.S. government. General Bo uh, was part of the U.S. government's, like, liaison to the SCP Foundation. So the SCP Foundation has its hands in a lot of pockets and its fingers in a lot of pies. Um, Funding-wise... And we have to think about, like, what, is, what does the SCP Foundation work? How, how does the funding come down? A lot of it's going to be probably discretionary spending from the U.S. government, probably out of the military budget, if I had money to bet, because that's where, if I had money to bet, that's, that's, a, that's a fun thing to say about when we're talking about the military budget. It, the U.S. military budget is so large that, like, a few billion dollars going towards some secret governmental organization could happen and no one would notice if it was done under the right uh circumstances and um the right red tape was cut through properly which is not too difficult when it comes to covert uh organizations but you also imagine that even though it's primarily funded by the u.s government it's going to also get its funding out of private industry as well because there's going to be a lot of private companies that have a vested interest in ensuring that the uh, the anomalous world doesn't affect their bottom line. So you're going to have some companies involved. Um, we talk about the SEB Foundation's power. Uh, in the United States and most of the world at this point, money is power. So the amount of funding, the reason why we talk about the amount of funding is the amount of funding is strongly reflective of how much power the uh, SCP Foundation is going to be able to wield. It's the reason why MCND is one of the most powerful GOIs in the uh, in the canon of the SCP Wiki, simply because they are the ones who have the money to exert their influence. It's also the reason why the GOC would be particularly powerful because they are funded by you know the UN. But of course, while the SCP Foundation does have its core in the United States government, like its or origins at the very least. Um, it definitely is international in scope. So you've got organizations like the GRU-P, which, you know, is the uh, Russian equivalent of the SCP Foundation, except the SCP Foundation has sites in Russia and does operations in Russia. 
Uh, so even though the state of Russia has its own version of the SCP Foundation, the SCP Foundation still is active in Russia, which means that they have, at the very least, to be significantly more powerful than that organization, or else that organization would keep them out. Same thing goes for the Horizon Initiative, which covers, you know, a lot, a large collection of Middle Eastern countries. The, U the SCP Foundation has got to be more powerful than the Horizon Initiative. And in effect, if you're more powerful than the organizations supported by those governments, you are more powerful than those governments, in a sense. I'm not going to say that if, like, the if Russia decided it was going to do away with the SCP Foundation, it wouldn't be able to do it. It would be pretty difficult since a lot of it's on U.S. soil. But it wouldn't be impossible. It could be done, probably, over a long period of time. I believe those, the, the, and a lot of clandestine work, it could possibly be done. But that's a good measuring stick. If the SCP Foundation can operate with impunity in Russia, even though Russia has a state-sponsored version of the SCP Foundation, then they must be powerful enough that Russia decides it's not going to get involved in trying to stop them. Not to say that Russia couldn't, but that the cost is too high for them to try and stop the SCP Foundation from operating on their soil. So, and that is ultimately, well, we look at the conventional armed forces of, <laughs> we're going to get into armed forces of Russia. The conventional armed forces of Russia are not incredibly powerful anymore. Um, they are probably one of the most militarily capable countries in the world, but in comparison to the conventional, we're not talking about nuclear weapons here, just talking about the conventional armies and equipment of Russia versus the United States, it, there is no comparison. Conventionally, uh, Russia would lose a war with the United States very, very quickly. That's the reason why, but it'll never happen because nuclear weapons exist. Part of the reasons why they'd probably have a, such a weak conventional uh, military. Uh, but they are still, even though they pale in comparison to the conventional military power of the United States, they are very powerful worldwide. And their intelligence services, which is another important aspect of this, are very capable. And I'm only outlining this exactly to be to make it clear because we have to compare uh, the power of the Russian Federation with uh, the power of the SCP Foundation because I think that's the easiest version of this that we can talk about. But also, other countries have their own versions as well. Um, uh, like we mentioned, the Horizon Initiative for the Middle Eastern countries, but there's mentions in some uh, some canons and some stories about Chinese state security being involved in the uh, containment of SCP or not SCPs. I'm using the wrong terminology here of the containment of anomalies in mainland China, and um, each of these organizations also still tolerate the SCP Foundation's presence uh, in their home countries. Now, one could look at this from the perspective of, like, say, the UIU. The UIU exists. The SCP Foundation exists in the United States. Does that mean that the SCP Foundation is somehow more powerful than the U.S. government? No, of course not. The idea of the UI, and that's the reason why the UIU is so often portrayed as so incredibly inept and subservient to the SCP Foundation in a large sense. Is simply because if they weren't, there would be no logical reason why the U.S. government would tolerate uh, the SCP Foundation inside its borders. Because in the, it would just be the UIU's job to do everything that's anomalous. The fact that they don't means that, you know, <clears throat> they believe the SCP Foundation is more capable of doing that. And the FBI is not a weak organization, believe me. I guess that's the best example you can compare the SCP Foundation. How powerful is it? At least as powerful as the FBI. At least as powerful uh, on a clandestine nature. At least as powerful as the GRU. You know? At least as powerful as the FBI. Probably at least as powerful as the CIA. At least as powerful as the GRU. Think about the most powerful intelligence service that you can think of. The SCP Foundation is at least that powerful which is pretty substantial honestly anyway that's my opinion on this one i think i could examine it in a little bit more detail but i don't want to run as long as i did last time when i asked a question which <laughs> that was that, that video is almost 20 minutes long and i don't want to keep doing those so thank you very much for watching 
If you enjoyed the video, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos. And then after that, if you want to continue to support the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dcimmerian, like everybody here on the screen already has, including Lawful Evil, who is at the O5 Council tier, and Vivi at the $100 tier, and Dr. J Redacted, also at the $100 tier. Thank you for letting me know that I'm not alone out here. I'll see you all again on Thursday.